Fall is in the air and it's officially spooky season. To celebrate, I am giving away a $100 Visa gift card. All you gotta do is submit your favorite photo or video of a day at the pumpkin patch, corn maze, your favorite hiking adventure, your favorite fish catch, or anything fall outdoor related and submit it to the Upol app contest. Link below to the Upol app, submit your favorite photo or video, have a chance to win a $100 Visa gift card. Good luck. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to this last minute live. Uh, we are here live at Jake's Bait and Tackle for really just our fall river smallmouth uh, extravaganza. If you guys can see, I have the call-in number right there on the screen, 667-307-8583. Going to do a little mic check real quick. Just guys, let me know how it all sounds. We got B-Cal in the house. Uh, good morning, Thomas. Good morning. Yeah, really. Um, I, my brain's broken, guys. It's been a long day with work and everything being a Friday. So what we're going to be doing here, first call in guest will win a gift card uh, for Jake's Bait and Tackle. Uh, really, we're just going to be talking small mouth, talking shop. The one thing I wanted to start the show off with is um, the Susquehanna River just dropped a seven pounder absolute donkey and and so let's i want to talk about that first before we get into it i guess we'll go from my left around uh if you don't know this guy introduce yourself i'm gettle heth coat uh known as doc the end okay good that was quick <laughs> short sight to the point <laughs> go for boss if you want to grab that mic and then uh, point it at your face yeah how you guys doing i'm jeff wolford Bassmaster. <laughs> yeah for Bassmaster. and uh jeff miller there we go. So uh, first thing uh, to start with, I never thought that kind of smallmouth is capable in the Susky. I don't know why. It just seems like it took forever for something like that to drop. What happened? Uh, I tell you, it was awesome just hearing Joe Raymond talk about it last night on the Susquehanna uh, uh, fishing show. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it's just, I think he was just obviously shocked and catching a fish that size in the water of the Susquehanna they was fishing. I think it was up around Williamsport, uh, an area where I think a lot of the fish are smaller. You know, you never, you know, two and a half, three, three and a half pounders, probably a large fish in that area, best I know. And uh, I think, you know, to land, to get that, to catch that fish there, it's just, you know, obviously once in a lifetime, mm -hmm. you know, but, uh, it was interesting to hear hear him talk about uh, the time he caught the fish at you know the hour compared to the hour that the uh, the the guy caught the nine pound uh, really could have potentially been I think a New York state record up on you know the St Lawrence dude that and, thing was freaking massive and it was uh, and it was actually in that same hour and, and and it was interesting hearing him talk about you know was it something about you know the fish just turning on at that time. You know the day when uh, I think it was caught at around nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. That's the best uh, best I can remember him saying. But uh, y'all, yeah, I mean, what what a trophy! Um, just incredible, incredible. Do you think something like that could ever break nine pounds on the Susquehanna, or is that just a freaky like oh. a goby type of fish? Oh, if man. you guys want, there you go. You can or grab the mics if you want to. Move yeah. them around. They're really sturdy, so you can just manhandle them. And there's also a mic right there too if you want that mic as well. There you go. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. I'll just sit right there. Perfect. Grab it, dude. It, it's, yeah, it's what really the... <laughs> I lost mine. Too. There you go. There you that's, go. that's all right. What I think you're going to see here in the upcoming years is, you know, as we start having these uh, weather patterns that change and you're getting more mild winters, you're not getting these freeze overs as hard as what we used to. Um, yeah, you're getting, you know, two degrees for three days and then you're getting a warm spell. I don't think we're getting these complete ice overs, um, deep freezes through the winters for two or three, four weeks in a row uh, like we used to. So I think what you're seeing is these fish or uh, in the wintertime are, are feeding more aggressively than what they used to, mm -hmm. um, you know, with, with warmer winters. Um, so, the, uh, of course, it makes sense. The more they're going to feed through the winter, the more weight that they're going to gain. Um, you know, nothing like a Florida fish would, but um, I really think that's what you're seeing. And I think you're going to see that progress on up to, um, you know, your St. Lawrence, your Lake Erie, um, up in those areas. Uh, like, I don't think Erie has froze over for 
It's been several years now. Yeah, it's been a while, hasn't um, it? So you get up around Prescow, uh, where they, you know, they love to ice fish. I think they got in two or three days of ice fishing all winter mm. last year. So that kind of tells you something. How much of the gobies really affected that up there? Uh, the, the goby, you know, the goby, I think, in, in my smallmouth fishing up north, is uh, <clears throat> it's big. Um, I think it's one of their very uh, big main forages, um, that in the Emerald Shiner. Hmm. Um, but for me, if I'm going after the big smallmouth, it's uh, it's a goby bait. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yep. Yes, I'm Ned. Oh, I mean, I'm, you know, same thing. The gobies are, they just put the weight on the fish. I mean, you know, I know I fish up close to Lake Ontario and the same thing. They, the gobies and the emerald shiners. I mean, you know, they're just, they gorge on them. And I think that's what puts the weight on them that we see. And, mm -hmm. you know, getting back to the big fish that Joe Raymond caught, I mean, you know, I got a buddy that fishes on the West Branch of the Susquehanna and he said anytime I'm gonna come up he would show me some he said there is some big fish there mm -hmm. you know and I mean I know Joe's is 23 and a half inches that that's just a powerful fish that's a freaking massive yeah it fish, is man. I mean it's the fish of a lifetime yeah. you know and Joe you know fishes a lot <laughs> oh, yeah. you know I know he guides more you know when he fished that tournament Sunday he said it's the first time he's actually really fished in a long time so do you think we'll ever see a seven, eight pounder break on any of our Virginia rivers or the upper Potomac or anything like that? Yeah, I do believe. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Well, grab yeah. Move yeah. that mic over there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, I totally think you will. Um, I mean, like in the Shenandoah River right now, I think of um, it's just a matter of time. You're, you're going to see uh, and hear of, you know, seven pound smallmouths. Um, if we don't have any fish you know, drastic fish kills, mm -hmm. if we can get some good spawns and, you know, keep the water fresh and like it should be, uh, and these fish can eat and grow and do their thing. I really believe you're going to see some seven pound smallies come out of there. Um, and it may not even be, uh, you know, a February, March fish mm -hmm. where, you know, you've got a good, uh, good egg sack, uh, in that fish to break the seven pound mark. I, I really think in, in the upcoming years, it could be that literally a uh, uh, middle of the summer, seven pound fish. Yeah. I didn't really know if it was possible until this past, like two months ago, I was fishing an MVKBA event on the Upper Potomac and I caught a tw almost a 22 inch beast and it was easily five and a half, six pounds. Um, an absolute summer giant. And it's just, there's so much bait in the Upper Potomac right now. When I was out there pre-fishing, the water was shimmering. There's so many minnows and I've never yeah. seen it this healthy before, honestly. Yeah. I was just telling Jeff earlier this evening, um, my wife and, and I were at Riverton last weekend. Actually it was on Sunday, I believe. And, <clears throat> um, we were on the South Fork and then on the mainstream and it was just incredible. The amount of bait um, that, that we could see mm -hmm. and the water had a little bit, just a little bit of stain to it. Not much, but, um, there was just a, and it was all different sizes of bait and there was just bait in the center of the river on the banks, you know, 10 yards off the bank. Um, and then the amount of small, um, bluegill, yeah. you know, two inch, three inch bluegill, they were just everywhere. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And like you said, the water, you pull up to a spot to fish and the water would just be shimmering with bait yeah. it's insane mm -hmm. and, and i really think we also haven't had a blowout with all the rain like it, it, when was the last time we had a hurricane that actually hit us t-boned us straight on like oh. or a super cold winter like it's been a while i think that's really helped out the environment yeah well i think jeff said the river's gonna come up to seven seven or eight seven yeah, eight six foot point, six, six point nine on so it'll get a, get a little mm -hmm. wash it'll get a little wash there which probably needs get some like, yeah you know, the, i mean a lot of grass, grass out floating and, now and, right you know it's time for it to die off so right yeah so well, i mean with all that said man let's just get into it like bait wise like uh you know we're right here in the beginning of october it's still really really hot i feel like we're gonna have an indian summer right now unless yeah. something drastically happens so what are you guys seeing right now generally with the with the water temperatures on you know from the susquehanna all the way down to these local rivers you know that yeah uh i mean on the shenandoah <clears throat> right now your your water temperature is generally in the 60s um you know, with this cooler rain, 
It may drop down to 63, 65. Right now? Um, I just muted it. Yeah, that was good because I couldn't yeah. hear nothing. But you was, yeah. you was out Sunday. Yeah, I was out Sunday. Uh, like I say, my wife and I, Arlene, my wife, well, we were out Sunday. And it was, uh, you know, 64, 65, 66 degrees in good color. Um, but, you know, when you get these, you're going to get these fronts that are going to be pushing in. And then, like you said, the, you know, the water level is going to come up. And it's, it's definitely going to clean that, that branch of the river out, um, which it definitely needs for sure. Yeah, and I was there on Friday mm -hmm. fishing, and water was seventy-one degrees. So yeah, that's a so I mean, and and two days, drop. you know, and that's factoring in a little bit of difference in the graphs, you know, yeah. a couple of degrees, degrees possibly. But um, yeah, the water temperature definitely dropped, and there was guys. I was probably six boats fishing around us, you know, throughout the morning there often, and we didn't get there real early. Um, and a lot of the boats were throwing spinner bait, and they were throwing top water. Several boats were throwing top water. And then the, the guys that I had talked to, um, nobody had had anything on top water. Huh. So was it the, the temperature drop? Um, you know, uh, was, is this the beginning of the transition? You know, the, the fall transition going from that close to 70 degree water and now you're getting down in the middle, lower 60s. Uh, it's, it's quite possible that that's it. You know, they're turning off the top water. Uh, we were throwing what we had our best luck on was uh, minnow, minnow style baits, and huh. you know finesse. Yeah. With uh, and like I said, there was so much bait visible in the water, it was hard not to throw that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of match the hatch, if you will. Yeah. Well, I think you know if you look at this fall transition, it's you know we think of it look at it as just well you know just one big transition, but really it's you know it's staged through the fall. I mean you know you start out late summer, and of course you go into you know the uh, kind of the mid fall and then the late fall. So that's actually three three kind of different patterns, if you will, you know of how you would uh, or at least how I would I usually would target you know the fish. Uh, but you know, I mean, you're looking. We're looking at two months, and, and I know they've been catching fish. I mean, you know, the fish are going to start. They already are. Uh, Kenny uh, Gano and I was on the Susquehanna River a few weeks ago, and we got in some fish, and they were. I mean, it was like it, well, they were wolf packed. I mean, you know, really. Yeah. Oh my goodness. You you know, they were just they were jumping everywhere at the at the lure. Uh, you know, top water lures at that point. So, you know, that's that's what you you know that's that, and that's kind of what you know you're you're hoping for and looking for. Is these fish kind of wolf packing together and aggressive, getting into that winter feed? And you know, as it gets cooler, they're gonna they're they're gonna say, you know, they're gonna start. I mean, really being aggressive, uh, even more so than in this warmer uh, mm -hmm. part of the fall, because they know what's coming. You know, so. And that's a good question to tee off for all you guys. But first, just for everyone that's listening in, again, the, the call-in number is 667-307-8583. I haven't opened up the caller line quite yet. I'm waiting for people to be pouring in before I open it up. The first couple of people to call in will win a gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle. So for anything else, even if you don't have a question, if you just want to get some free money, just give us a call. Um, is it better to have a long, hot fall or to have a quick, cold snap and to get it to cold? to get this fish to really to chew i prefer the the, tr the quicker transition you know kind of uh, moving progressing right along you know so you uh i, I mean that's what i prefer uh, i don't know yeah I'm right there with yeah, you know, yeah uh, definitely i think uh, that's why they feed so heavily up north and even like deep creek lake because the altitude they even say there like the feed bag goes on real quick when yeah. it starts getting cold yeah. there and i think that's the problem like when people say about fall fishing sucking when you go down south is because you have that such massive extended window before it actually gets cold and i i, I think it messes with them and i've always been weird it's like is it is it the temperature or the daylight yeah what triggers them first honestly like to me i always thought it was the temperature but then i looked at grass would die off regardless of temperature right. well that's daylight right yeah, yeah. I, I think it's both i mean it's i think both. it's a, i think it's a, a both. and and you bring up a good uh, point there because if you look say from north to south uh, you know if you go up north you know by thanksgiving the you know you're you're really getting in some cool some actually cold weather and some of those places where we fish up there right on the canadian border and then but at the same time down in down in tennessee or northern alabama uh, you know, you're still looking at a, a late, uh, you know, or maybe an early fall pattern. Uh, 
because mm-hmm. I've been down there before thinking I was going to be on fish, and it was it was actually not the right time of year. You know, I should have been down there in December or something like that instead of being down there in late October or early November. So, you know, you got that, of course, north to south. But, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, – but the the good part is, I mean, this is a wonderful time of the year to fish. Mm-hmm. I mean, man, it's like it's like one of my favorites. I mean, I guess I love the spring a little better, but man, these these October, November, mm-hmm. December, even uh, depending on the weather, boy, I mean, it's game on. Mm-hmm. It's game yeah, on. and it's 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 like you said, Dom. You know, fall is fall. You know, your water temperature is falling, your air temperature is generally falling. Leaves are falling off the trees, you know, and changing colors, which is another great yeah. thing. It's, you know, it's not only about catching the fish, it's the, you know, the nice scenery. Um, you know, the, the, the angle of the sun in the sky has changed, you know, obviously. And, uh, you know, it's with all that taking place, it's the, the mother nature and the instinct of these fish. And it's, it's one thing we need to feed. Mm-hmm. We got to feed and because we know what's coming right around the corner. And I think that ties into this first question that we got here from uh, the Patreon supporter Everett here, which is, what's y'all's favorite fall fishing bait? Well, we got a plethora of baits to be going through here. Um, I have no idea where we're going to start with this bad boy. What, uh, Doc, you had a cool thing with the donkey rig that you were yeah, wiping up. Well, I mean, I, t- I really like fishing plastics. I mean, you know, I do fish to hard baits and stuff too, but I really love fishing plastics. And I think, uh, you know, right now is a, a great time. I enjoy fishing the fluke. Uh, and I'll just show you a couple of quick, quick things about the different rigging on the fluke. Uh, you know, sometimes the problem you run into, or that I used that yeah, I run into with fluke is, you know, you miss, you end up miss, missing, uh, you know, a lot of fish, uh, in, in, in a lot of cases, but, uh, there's a couple of rigs that, uh, I've picked up either on the internet or through the magazines. And, uh, this is one of them here. It's a really cool, uh, way to rig a, a, a soft plastic, like a fluke, and it's with a treble hook. And what you do, you gotta have the uh, uh, these, these rivets, uh, you can get them at uh, Lowe's or whatever. And basically, here you are, uh, you, you put that through the, through the, um, you know, through the, the backside of the undercut there on that uh, soft plastic and you run your line, that's what you run your line through. And then you basically just have a treble hook that you hook in the belly. So you got two hooks coming out. Uh, uh, it helps, it, it actually helps with the hookup. I mean, I've definitely uh, had uh, good luck with that, especially if you're in a place where you don't have to worry about hangups so much. Mm-hmm. But uh, so that's a that's a good way if you're kind of in open water where you can fish it, that's a really good way to increase your hookups. And this is a, Another way that probably helps with the hookups, this is a credit to Randy Blockett for this here. I picked this up uh, on his show. And this is where, you know, we always basically hook these rigs where the hook's coming out the top. But this uh, is hooked through the, where the hook's coming out the bottom. And it actually, you know, probably helps the hookup a little bit. Let me grab this here. But here's one of my favorite rigs to fish this time of year. And this, the donkey rig, or people call it, uh, you know, uh, tandem men or how, you know, it's probably different names for it. But uh, this is, uh, this is a, cool. this is a really, I uh, can get the damn thing in front of here. This is the, the donkey. Basically, what I do is I take about an eight or 10 inch uh, uh, leader, you know, these are on swivels, and I'll, uh, to my lead line, I'll, I'll hook, uh, uh, you know, but, uh, the fluke, and then I'll have another, you know, swivel that's free running here and I'll have it a little longer. And basically you, what you're doing because of this wolf packing that I was talking about, uh, in the water, this has an awesome action. Uh, just, I mean, it's, it's just, you have to, you just got to try this. This is incredible. Uh, and like I said, this time of year, when you got these smallmouth and bass that are, are, uh, are wolf packing, man, that, you, you know, you get mm. double hookups and, uh, it's just, a it's just fun fishing and you'd think that would get tangled up, but really it, it does not. I hmm. mean, it, it really fishes, it fishes very well. And so that's probably one of my, one of my favorite way, ways, uh, one of my favorite, uh, fishing uh, ways to fish. 
this time of year. What size flukes do you like to use? Is it just the five inch or do you ever well, go to different sizes? Oh yeah, I mean, I think you, you kind of match the hatch. I mean, you know, ideally I'd like to start out with the larger ones then if there's, you know, then work my way down. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, you tend, you know, a lot of times you'll tend to you know, maybe get a little larger fish sometimes using bigger baits. And I, I'll work, I'll usually work my way down. I don't know how, you, how Jeff and Jeff do theirs, but I'll start out with, uh, you know, this size and work down to, hmm. Uh, the, the, even the baby Z twos, you know, mm. uh, can go all the way down to that, you know, that mm -hmm. size. Like I said, depending on the hatch. So I, I just wanted to show show that really because that's a that's a fun fishing way to fish. Well, and our, this 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 particular rig, what you see, uh, if there's any people listening and watching in, um, that fish saltwater, um, speckled trout. Yep. This is a hot little speckled trout rig. So for you folks that like the Pimlico Sound. You know, any place that you're going for specks, uh, red redfish will hit it. Um, if you got a gray trout around, they'll hit it. And um, it is, it's it's really nice. And you can you can actually put small jig heads in here. You can fish it weedless yep. like Doc has it here. Mm -hmm. um, and you can tandem colors. Yep. Uh, it's, it's a great little rig. I'm happy to announce our first ever members only fishing tournament, the Halloween Bash on Tourney X. The tournament is going to go from October 12th until midnight on Halloween. Registration is open now and it ends Monday, October 14th at midnight. You must be a Patreon supporter to enter this competition. For the $20 entry fee for the tournament, I am guaranteeing $100 for the biggest largemouth caught, $100 for the biggest smallmouth caught, $100 for the biggest rock bass, $100 for the biggest sunfish, and I'll be paying out a first place and a second place, and those numbers will be dependent on how many people sign up. Again, the tournament is $20 for Patreon members only, and to be a Patreon member and to help support Fishing the DMV, it's only $6 a month. And for that $6, which is less than a pack of Senkos or Jackhammer Chatterbait, all Patreon supporters will receive 5% off their orders to Jake's Bait and Tackle, 10% off their orders to Tiger Crankbaits, 10% off their orders to Catoctin Creek Rods. They'll also gain access to our private Facebook group community, loads of members only content, our monthly photo contest giveaway, and of course, for this month, our Halloween Bash Fishing Tournament. Again, if you would like to join this community and join this really cool fishing tournament, link in the episode description down below. Thank you so much. And I love that you went with the two different colors there to try yeah. to get zero in on it. A lot it of times they use bubble gum too instead of mm. chartreuse. So either white and bubble gum or white and chartreuse. Either, Ch chartreuse you know. in general is such an underappreciated color because a lot of people I think only think about it for like stained water in general. But it's just when you have yellow like that going through the water quickly, like a crankbait fluke or whatever, it just gets them yeah. to react to it. It really does what and i see you got a plethora of crankbaits there i don't even know where to start with that yeah so we're getting we're getting close to pretty close to crankbait season which i know jeff over here thoroughly enjoys and and uh and obviously we do too but uh that's kind of if he's going to throw three baits two out of three of them's going to be crankbait um Anytime the water, like actually from right now, if it gets just a little bit of color to it, like it had Friday, um, you know, it's it's chatterbait, crankbait, spinnerbait, you know, those quick reaction bites. Cover water. Um, yeah, and you can. You can really, you can drift down through there. You got enough water. Uh, you can, you know, drift backwards. You don't have to worry about bumping the trolling motor as much. And, and really, you know, just fan cast, uh, you know, and if the water's on the rise, you know, get up next to the bank. If it's fallen, you know, then, you know, the fish will tell you what they want and where they're at. Um, but, you know, there's a variety of crankbaits, like from now on down to when it gets down to about 55 degrees, you know, your spros, uh, your bandits. Bandit has a multitude of colors uh, for your water uh, conditions. Um, you know, you got your six cents. They've got some great crankbaits out now. Once that water temperature hits about 55, um, and they get into that uh, mood where they really want to chase a bait, uh, whether it is they're starting to, uh, you know, they're laying off the uh, the minnow some, and they're getting in after these small bluegill that we mentioned mm -hmm. earlier. Um, once it hits about 55, then uh, you want to start throwing your rattle trap baits, you know, your rattle trap lookalikes. Uh, you can try baby bass colors, you can try your perch colors. Um, you know, this 
this old red one here, if there's a little color to the water, this, this is tried and true right here, the red with a little orange on it. And don't be afraid to throw it. Don't don't leave without your red. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't Make be sure afraid you got to throw the red. Yeah. Red when you go fishing yeah. now. The old red rattle trapper has been a lot oh, of big man. smallmouth Absolutely. caught on that. Yep. A lot of big smallmouth. We got B Cow saying uh, lower Rappahannock River at Whitestone for the speckled trout and redfish, 100%. Uh, we got Seth Cornelius. Whatever that means. Uh, let's see, let me check on Instagram. Sorry for my Instagram people. Uh, let's see. Are you guys... Let's see. When do you take away the top water bite? We already answered that question. And they, oh, I forgot to tell you guys. Okay, phone lines are now open. I just clicked the open button. So the queue is now open. Again, the number is 667-307-8583. First couple of people to call in will win a gift card to Jake's Bait and Tackle. Um, yeah, back back to that. It, it's it's really interesting about the crankbait thing because and just moving baits in general because the one thing that will happen on the Shenandoah River, the Upper Potomac, and I think the Susquehanna, is you'll get this weird moment where the grass starts dying. And then you can't throw shit. <laughs> it's yeah. really hard to throw yeah. anything with a treble hook through there. Are we there yet at that time frame? No. Well, I mean, with the depends on the you know the rise of the water. I mean, that it is time for stuff to start dying. Mm. And like we was out there Friday, and we did have you know quite a bit of grass floating down. There is a lot of algae floating in the river mm -hmm. right now too. But um, yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it, it takes a lot of patience with a crankbait, especially when the grass is. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could throw one time or you could throw six times and you could uh, pull in grass, but um, yeah, and get, it's get it, back it, to the crankbait. I mean, they just, it's a bait that I'm telling you, if nobody throws it, you're really missing out because it will catch fish. And um, you can pull into a hole hit like from now till the water temperature gets down to like 45 degrees. Oh, yeah. And it's consistently crankbait season is here. Crankbait season is here. And the thing of it is you can fish a bank for three or 400 yards and maybe pick up a fish or two and get into one eddy and load the live well. Yep. Because, you know, they know what's coming. And they and it's like Doc said earlier on the Susquehanna. You know, you get in behind an island when him and Kenny were there. And it's just as fast as you can throw that bait in and unhook that fish you just caught and get it back in there. You're going to be hooked up again. Mm -hmm. yep. Now, uh, when you come with your uh, with with crankbaits, do you switch out your hooks at all? Do you prefer like ultra uh, triple grips or do you prefer like, round bends at all? I like triple grips. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. I I don't do a lot of changing in my hooks, you know. To be honest with you, but you know. I do. I have you know changed them out for getting a little war or whatever. But I usually just fish whatever I whatever I buy. I know it's probably not the best thing to do, but that's just what I do. Yeah, but a lot of your top end crankbaits yeah. have, oh, good, have good yeah, hooks. Have good that's hooks exactly right. Yeah. right. That's a, and and I will make one statement about the top water there. You know, don't you know right now have you a top water on on oh, on your on your sure. boat deck right mm -hmm. now? And I tell you something else. Don't forget uh, a wake bait is. It's, so you got a few here, right? Yeah, a wake bait is uh, don't. I, right now, I'd probably have wake bait. Just soon have wake bait on other uh, over a uh, you know like a uh, you know uh, some of the other even walking baits or uh, you know, even a buzz whopper, even a buzz, or, buzz bait or, bait or, or whopper, whopper, yeah. whopper. But uh, here's here's one. It's, uh, it's nobody hardly ever you hardly ever see that. It's a Cajun. Boy, and I've, I have really wore some uh, smallmouth out on Susquehanna with that bait. Uh, that color, that Zach bait, right? Matter of fact, and then uh, here is uh, this new speed wake by uh, Six Sense. You can even hold it closer if you want. Yeah, it's a super wide area. Yeah, that's a pretty good size bait if you really look at it. It's um, you know. Yeah, uh, it's a big bait. And yeah. like, what is the difference between a wake bait and a cr shallow? Well, this is just running bait. shallow. Just it's just barely under the surface, and it's really it's really making a wake. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's uh, uh, as you can see, this is kind of uh, plowing, if you will. You see how the you know it's okay, designed. Yeah, you yeah, see yeah. what I'm saying? So you're kind of plowing it's, the water. It's pushing water. Yeah. Yes. Hard. Yes. It's it's uh, right. Uh -huh. it, it's it's pushing, and uh, so the, that's the way. That, this is that six cent bait. I, I'm just mm. that's kind of a new bait. I'm just starting to use that a little bit, but uh, that old Cajun bait. And of course, you know, I like to use it once again. It's where I start out using the larger mm -hmm. uh, weight baits and work all the way down to the small, depending on you know. Uh, so Did I just I just throw that out about the top water in their words. Don't 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 totally, I mean don't totally think yeah, you no. can't use a top water right now because you sure can. And the good thing about a wake bait is um, you can 
easily keep that in the strike zone a whole lot longer Mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to a buzz bait, um, you know, a whopper plopper where you have to keep it going. Um, The wake bait, you can slow that thing down to where it's just a real slow swim. Mm-hmm. So it stays in that strike zone. It yeah, yeah. So, so. and, and as it. Mm-hmm. you know, it's like the guys I was referring to on Sunday. Um, they were they were throwing you know buzz baits and whopper ploppers, and they just could not believe they were not getting bit. Mm. But you know, and obviously the fish just weren't in the mood for that. Now if they would have changed out to a wake bait and slowed that presentation down, still top water per se, they could have easily gotten bit. That's yeah. so cool. And then it looks like we have our first gift card giveaway here. So I'm going to get to the phone lines here. Um, we got our first call number 443. Uh, you are on the show. What's up? Hey, how's it going? My name is Justin. Hey, hey Justin. Justin. So my question is, is when you guys are talking about the South Key, are, are you guys talking above the dam or below the dam? Because I fish below the dam and I haven't really did too much fishing above it. So I'm trying to find some good spots to, to go out up there to fish above the dam. Yeah. Now you're talking about the dam at uh, City Island? Not the kind of one go down. Okay. So you're oh, okay. way down there. So are you guys fishing below the dam or is it up above that dam oh. when you guys are talking about the stuff? Then? Up I, above Conowingo, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Way yeah. Up. We're, oh, okay. Yeah, we're way up above, like 15 miles above 81, above yeah. Harrisburg. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so up in PA pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah like, and, and are you fishing okay. primarily from the shore? No, I'm in a kayak. Kayak, okay, yeah, because Conowingo itself, the reservoir, I mean, that place right there is banging, too. I know Mid-Atlantic fished an uh, event this year, and it took almost, I think it was like 90 inches to win, so the reservoir itself is really good smallmouth fishing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I've been up there a few times uh, the last last month or two, and a couple of my buddies have, and I've hooked into a nice size football up there, but got off right at the boat in between the islands, and I was jigging a, um, a dark sleeper around a little bit, bouncing mm-hmm. it off the bottom, like you would do a tube. Yeah. So, any suggestions for down there below the dam? I've not really fished much down that area. My, most most fishing that I'm uh, familiar with on the Susquehanna is like like Jeff said, starts about 81 and runs up, you know, uh, actually all the way up to Sunbury. But you know, uh, that's the I, I, I know that's great fishing down there. I have fish down to the mouth got, of the I river. I do have some, though. Yeah. Um, I'm really for that deeper water. Um, now, are you talking about the tail race specifically? Tail race, um, it's going to be really when they start – because you're in a kayak. That fishing is going to turn on like gangbusters when they start pulling out of Conowingo. It's almost like a TVA system because um, I fish two uh, college regionals uh, championships on the upper bay. And so we would run all the way up to Conowingo because – if you get into the rivery portion, the tide doesn't matter and you can catch fish. But what we learn in practice is it really is dependent with those bad boys on are they pulling or generating a lot of current. When that happens, they're going to set up behind all of those eddies and you're going to want to go with um, jerk baits. I, I have a couple of here that I really like. Let me get this one here. This one here is the Mega Bass uh, Shatting XR62. Um, and then like a, okay. he- a heavier jig when that current is really ripping so you can get down there. Because if you think about it, and this is what I learned about the Susquehanna, any part of the Susquehanna River, the St. Lawrence, whatever, if you go to any small creek and you go wade that really shallow creek, you'll yeah. see what the riffles look like. Well, when you take the Susquehanna and the St. Lawrence, those riffles still exist, but they're in 20 feet of water. Those seams still exist. And so when they're pulling water, they could be up really, really shallow, or they're going to be back in 10 to 15 feet in those same seams. The problem with those seams is there's so much water moving. You need a heavier tube, a heavier jig, because that bait, when it hits the water, it might just it might just rush out of the zone real quick. So a half ounce potentially. Yeah, that's what I'm what's happening. Yeah. Well, this might help with these guys, because you guys have fished the St. Lawrence a couple of times. Mm-hmm. How heavy do you guys go uh, when you deal with that kind uh, of current? I fish heavier probably than, these, than Jeff or Jeff, but I, I'm, a, I, I'm half, an, <laughs> half ounce. I fished. I that have fished. Wild. I have fished three quarter ounce wow. tube jig head tube tubes. Yeah, sure. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm I'm yeah. half half ounce all the way um, to get down like a tube tube bait. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I'll do that I found really helps me. And if anybody knows me and the way I fish, um, I'm a light tackle guy. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a finesse light tackle. So I will throw a half ounce tube on six pound line. Jeez. Yeah, he will. So. How? 
Yeah, he will. <laughs> so when you think about it, if you're throwing that half ounce tube on, let's just say 12 or 14 pound, um, and even and you know the current's rolling and you throw it up, you've got the diameter of that line that's bowed while that tube is sinking. So the, the body of the tube is moving, uh, obviously. Okay. And then your line is pulling the tube even faster as due to the diameter of the line. So if I can chuck that same okay. tube on six pound line, then my diameter, my line is, you know, it's cut in half of hmm. what, you know, the other guys would be. So therefore that tube is, it's going to the bottom, let's say per se twice as fast. Hmm. And so then it'll stay in the strike zone twice as fast. And then when it's bumping across the bottom, if you think about it, I don't have all the line resistance pulling hmm. it too fast through the strike zone. So I can hold it there and, and shake it a whole lot easier. I just learned something too. Damn, I didn't even know that. Wow. I, so what, what, do you, what do you do when, the, if the bait gets snagged on a rock down there or the fish takes you in some cover? I mean, does that happen often yeah. with you with four-pound line uh, or six-pound line? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and I, I mainly, I'll, I'll throw tubes on four-pound line too. You're um, insane. And, <laughs> yes. and it catches you know, the hell out of them. <laughs> And catch a lot of fish on a four pound line, and you know, and I love fighting the fish. It's all about you know setting your drag and just having confidence and and keeping a good sharp hooked. Um, so yeah, I, when you get clo- agree with that. yeah, when you when you're getting close to cover like that, um, and you're throwing four or, or even six pound line, and you know you hook a hook a football as you were referring to earlier that you lost right at your kayak. Um, you know, a four pound smallmouth, yeah. he's going to pull off a decent amount of drag. Mm-hmm. And you know, they're notorious for heading for that cover. You know, they played that game before. They're not dumb. Um, so it's just like you almost have to uh, get on your knees and pray. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you can you can get on a you know you're, I know you're in a kayak, but you for me I'm on a, I'm on a trolling motor, and I'm not only mm-hmm. trying to pull him away from that cover. I'm using a trolling motor to help me pull him away from that cover. Yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, I. I, I'm kind of cheating, I guess you could say, with a kayak because I got the autopilot 120, so I kind of got, got the motor in the spot okay. lock. Okay, so, okay. good. Yeah, good. so oh, I'm yeah. like, it, it, it's pretty good for building the river situation because I can spot lock in certain spots Absolutely. and be able to uh, cast on the rocks and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then you talked about getting hung up in, you know, in the rocks or uh, whatever, you know, cover type of cover that you're fishing. So for me, if I'm getting hung up in the rocks, I'm fine with that because I know my bait's getting down where I want it to be. Okay. So, and you're going to lose them. I mean, that's, you that's are part, lose. yeah, that's you're part, that's, for me, that's par for the course. You know, that's why you carry, you know, 300 tubes in your favorite color on the <laughs> boat. Um, really, when you go to Erie or, you know, Niagara or St. Lawrence, you know, I'm not taking a hundred tubes with me, no. mm-hmm. you know, if I'm there for a week. So, and it is, you know, oh, wow. it is, it's par, it's par for the course. You need a lot of half ounce jig heads and, and some three ace too. Especially I will throw, muscles too. Yeah. I will throw three ace, yeah. um, with a weed guard, um, on four and six pound test. And then I will throw a half ounce without a weed guard on six pound. Awesome stuff. Justin, mm-hmm. I can't thank you enough for calling in. Okay. Yeah, what, I, yeah, what I want you to do is uh, yeah, email me, fishingindmv at gmail.com, or you, may, you can message me on Facebook or Instagram, and I'll get you that uh, gift card tomorrow morning, boss. I really appreciate you calling in. No yeah. problem. Thank good, you, guys. Have a good, good day. Call yeah, with you, Justin. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's a really good – and we got another we got another caller in the queue here, but we'll get a minute. Like, that's really interesting, though, because like, I, I, when we think river fishing, like again, growing up on the Shenandoah of the Upper Potomac, it's like weightable rivers. So reading the seams are one thing, but when you get onto those massive swollen things, like this, like the St. Lawrence or that part, it's a river still, but it is 30 feet deep. Yeah. But the fish still kind of behave the same way. Right. Tail races. Yeah, tail races. I'm getting tail races. But there is just so much. Like the one time I went up there with my brother for half a day and you're throwing a three eight ounce drop shot. By the time it hits the water, it's behind the boat. It's... The amount of water there that rips is insane. It really is. That's why, like, uh, if you're down on the, like you were talking about on the Tennessee River chain, mm-hmm. 
Uh, you get in them tail races and you get on a spinnerbait bite or something. They're, they're throwing ounce and a half. It's insane. Those ounce are and massive spinnerbaits. Ounce and a half spinnerbaits. I remember um, what Kennedy was. I think maybe it was you that told me about Kennedy. Where like he'd tell the cameraman, like, listen, if you fall in right now, just toss the camera. Don't worry about it because like it was ripping so yep. hard, he could have drowned or something. Oh yeah, uh, no, no doubt. Yeah. I mean, it's absolutely insane. Okay, I don't want. I know you've been on the. You've been on hold here, sir, for about ten minutes. Uh, two four zero six eight seven. You're on the show. What's up? Hi, Thomas. Uh, Greg Horning, how are you doing this evening? Uh, hey, Greg, how are you doing, yeah. boss? I'm good. Hey, I got a question for those three gentlemen. It's a two-part question. Um, I'd like to know, you know, the age-old question Thomas likes to ask it a lot is, do you guys like tubes or Ned Rigs? Ooh, that's a good one. What's your choice? My and number team. two of that, answering that question could you tell me your presentations and why you like one over another? Mm. Yeah. Greg, that is an absolute That's awesome a great question. question. Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I am like throwing tubes. I mean, I will throw the Ned Rig, but most of the time it is a tube. And, um, you know, we used to throw a lot of the three and a halfs, but, you know, that's all we pretty well had, three and a half, four inch. But now the 2.75s or even your two and a halfs so my favorite size to throw is the two and three quarter. And um, mm -hmm. that's pretty much what I do. Yeah, I'd say probably that's going to be um, really depending on what body water you're on and what time of the year it is for me. Um, but if I had to answer the question just in general, um, I'm 80% tube, 20% Ned Rig. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm a, uh, I love fishing tubes and I fish them year round. There's no, no off time. And, uh, I do fish Ned rigs. I, I, when I'm fishing, I'll have, I'll, I'll have both rigs. Sometimes they'll, you know, sometimes you have to go the, I, I have to go the Ned uh -huh. rig to get a bite. Uh, but, uh, you know, probably 90% of the time I'm using a tube and I tell you what here at Jake's bait and tackle, uh, they're carrying a new tube now. It's made. It's a. Uh, it's a uh, custom tubes made by Kenny G, and these tubes are outstanding. They're they they hold up good in the rocks. They uh, the plastic that uh, uh, this gentleman uses to make his tubes are. I mean, it, they're 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 really nice tubes. They're, they're really they really hold up good. And I can put a half ounce uh, jig, uh, uh, jig head in in, in the tube or. Uh, you know, I can put a quarter ounce teardrop uh, mm -hmm. tube in the tube. Uh, works great. Uh, and the way I like to fish, uh, depending on where I'm at, like if I'm around here, I, I'm, I'm a kind of a, I guess a, you'd say a dragger. I basically try to stay on the bottom, bumping the rocks uh, and keep it down. Uh, uh -huh. You know, if, you, if I'm in the grass, I'll sure do, you know, I'll do the, the old two, you know, the, you know, snap you know snap the tube um and it and it definitely works it's it's hard to believe how that you know you can catch them that way but that definitely works but uh but yeah that's uh that's i think you know you just about if you yeah if you go out it's nothing wrong with having one of each tied on mm -hmm. because uh you know that you'll you'll use them one uh you probably end up using them both and they're both great baits but uh like i said uh you know i guess they'll t the tube uh, has gone kind of gone to the wayside over the years, but um, it, it's 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 proven. Yeah, I mean, and I don't mean to cut you off. I wonder if it's because everyone's perception in the bass fishing world is like a tube is just for smallmouth, whereas the Ned rig, it's kind of become accepted that Jacob Wheeler can use a Ned rig and he's not mm -hmm. less of a man for doing it. Yeah. But the the tube is just for smallmouth guys, and it's a weird misconception because I know in the, at least the Antietam Bass Masters, I get my butt kicked all the time by guys throwing tubes on the tidal Potomac and everywhere else, but. It's weird that that's what people think of it as. It's just yeah. for smallmouth. Yeah. And, and just think about well, punching. They use it to punch. Uh, they mm -hmm. use the big tubes to punch. I mean, you catch large, big, you know, largemouth with it too. Uh, and I've caught a lot of largemouth fishing the tube in some of the, uh, the lakes around here. Uh, but yeah, it's yeah, it's just I don't know. It's it's just definitely not. As, I don't think as popular as the the Ned rig for for whatever reason. But uh, it's 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 tried and true for me. Yeah. I've got. Uh, over two, I mean, I've got at least two smallmouth over seven pounds, and they've both been on tubes. And, uh, you know, uh, let, let me ask you something there, Doc. Um, yeah. Did you say you use a quarter ounce? Yeah, I use different size. Depending on the river I'm fishing, like if I'm fishing the Shenandoah or the, uh, uh, 
Potomac River, the upper Potomac River, I'll use uh, a lot of times I'll use a quarter ounce or three sixteenths ounce, kind of depending on the water level. But I, I'm, you know, I tend to fish heavy compared to most people. I really like staying on the bottom. Uh, and uh, so, I, you know, and, and, and sometimes that, that don't work. I mean, you need to be, you know, where you, you, your, your tubes really has a better drift. But, uh, yeah, typically I'll use a quarter ounce or three sixteenths ounce on the local, you know, the uh, Shenandoah, Potomac, mm -hmm. and even on the Susquehanna, uh, I'll use a quarter ounce or three sixteenths. But if I go, if I'm up north fishing in, in you know, Erie or the uh, Niagara River or Ontario, mm -hmm. I'm using, I'm using, I'm usually using a half ounce, uh, uh, just about, you know, 90%, not probably 95% of the time. And I usually pour my own jig heads. I'll use a half ounce with a, uh, you know, with a uh, number, it's actually with the number, to see, the two, mm -hmm. the number two, the number two hook, which is, is kind of, you know, it's a lot of lead and very little hook, but, you know, for these smaller tubes, I love using the, the two and three quarter out, uh, two and three uh, quarter inch tubes, and that's what I have to use. I, I do miss, you know, lose uh, fish because of that smaller hook, but, you uh, I, that's the sizes I typically use, but yeah, uh, three sixteenths and a quarter is probably, you know, the local rivers. That's usually hundred percent of the time. Those are the sizes I'm using mm. locally. Greg, I really appreciate okay, you calling. And Thomas, oh, yep. Go for it, bud. Thomas, uh, one, one, one more little question, then I'll let you gentlemen go. And I appreciate all your answers. Yeah. Thank you. How Greg. about color of the tube? Oh Lord. That's a rabbit hole. Color all right. Of tubes. Okay. Um, I mean, that's like picking whether you like a blonde or a brunette. I really feel like part of it is just mentally what you, because I, how many times do I think of fish? And I, I think about this all the time when I've spent my mortgage on baits. Do they really look at it and go like, oh, there's a little bit of gold flake in that compared to that? Or they just eat it. And like it, Jared has said this wherever yeah. you are, God yeah. bless your soul, Jared. But like, um, is it to catch fish or fishermen when we get super crazy well, with the colors? Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> Tell them, Jeff. Tell them, tell them the story there. I mean, well, if, I mean, for me, um, if I strictly had to pick one tube to head north or local waters, um, it's hands down. Um, it's it's kind of like the color that I came up with here, I don't know, five, six years ago. Um, and it, it's like the color of a goby. Um, and to take it up north, um, it just, it just hammers smallmouth. It's like they just cannot resist it. And these guys will tell you, yeah. um, it's, it's probably one of the best colors of tube and it is somewhere. And I will tell you, it's somewhere between an amber and a green pumpkin, yeah. probably closer to a darker amber shade. Mm. Um, now, and, and kind of designed it to, to rep, you know, to imitate a goby, um, you know, it has the, the light and the black blotches on them and you know, with her head being a little bigger. Um, and that's the reason we, you, you know, we go to, you put a half ounce jig head up in this tube and what does it do to the mm -hmm. head of the tube? It blows it up. Um, and if you pull up a picture of a goby, the head is, is definitely bigger than the body. So, and it's just little tricks of the trade like that. But that, that mm -hmm. particular color is really, if I had to put one color in my tackle bag, it would be that tube. I like that. I yeah, no doubt. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, uh, this yeah. lights out. No, yeah. Oh, yeah. This tube uh, is kind of a. Uh, the, the, I use kind of a. It's. A, I guess you a green pumpkin. It, it's similar to that, but it has gold green. It's kind of the green pumpkin with gold, uh, and sometimes with purple flake. And that tube I fished from Alabama to Canada, and if I had one bait to fish. And I, that's the only bait I had. It would be that tube. And I, like I said, and it's off. It's a, uh, a green pumpkin uh, colored tube. Um, and you can get them River Rock. I guess River Rock carries uh, mm -hmm. carries a similar one. Called, uh, it's a River Rock uh, custom baits. Uh, Dark Erie Green is the particular is one is one of the particular colors. But like I said, these custom baits, uh, Kenny G's custom baits, uh, he's he's come, he's got some colors that are just, uh, yeah, they're going to be phenomenal. Uh, they will know, be. It's definitely. going to be, uh, it's going to be incredible. So yeah, just keep your eyes open from the, on Jake's site, and you'll you'll see some. But yeah, I think if you go with that green, if you go with a green pumpkin type yeah. color uh, tube from north to south, you're you're going to be in fish. 
uh, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We could talk for hours about tubes and tube colors, but uh, Greg, uh, we got a couple more people in the queue, but I want to say you. thank you so thank much you, for Greg. calling, and I thank appreciate you. it, boss man. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm. All righty. We got our next caller here. You've been on the line for about, I think it's been about 10 minutes, 540-686. Boss, you are on the line. Oh, and I just hit the... Well, I'm sorry. I just hit the hang up button on you. Sorry. Uh, wrong button there. I'm sorry. Apparently, my eyes are going. Uh, if you would like to call back into the show, feel free to call back in. I'm sorry. I just dropped you right there. Whoops. This is why This is why Carly, if you're listening, I kind of would like... Oh, wait. Are you... Call back? I can call... No, can't call that one. Back. So, uh, yeah. Please come back, uh, Carly, next time so I can get you on the... Oh, here he is. We got another one to call in. Sweet. Sorry about that. I'm getting used to this new dashboard. Caller, you are here. Uh, three, two, three. You're on the show. This is J Rod. Oh my Jared. What are you doing, boss? J Rod, my man. What's going on? Hey, I got it. You gotta tell Ray there. His hands are not as sexy as mine. <laughs> That's right. Hey. I saw his hands on there. They're not near as sexy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, his is kind of wrinkled, aren't they? <laughs> what uh what's the fishing like? Where, where are J-Rod's you? J Rod's on the fish. So I'm, uh, we're going to fish a Lake Anna, uh, veterans tournament tomorrow. We got 12 combat vets oh, awesome. that are going to be, uh, we're taking out and for a tournament, uh, heroes on the river. And so we're going to get these guys on the water. Uh, it's a short tournament, seven to 11. Uh, there's going to be a bunch of prizes for them and, and lunch and all kind of good stuff. So we're hoping to get them on some fish tomorrow. What's a, what is it fishing like right now? And then again, guys, we're going to take a couple more callers. So if you want to call in, I'm sorry if I missed your call. I'll do better next time. But uh, Jared, yeah, tell us what's going on at Lake Anna. Well, I haven't, uh, I know they're getting a lot of rain. Um, I don't know what the level's like or anything. And I haven't had a chance to pre-fish. So we're going to go into it tomorrow <laughs> and and uh, see what we can find. So we're going to kind of go in blind. But uh, it'll be good to get on the water. It is supposed to, rain's supposed to clear off tomorrow. So we'll, we'll hopefully see what we can get into you have been fishing an insane amount lately yes he has i've been seeing the facebook mm-hmm. what uh what has been it's crazy because like i remember like when you felt like you never went fishing and now you're gone every weekend you're like a professional like what how is how has it been like i want to say skill wise but when you get to fish a lot do you feel like the instinct really comes on when you do that I don't know. I'm not, I'm far from a professional, but it has been cool to see, you know, get on different bodies of water. We were with the youth down the James river. Our boys did a great job there. Uh, Cam and his partner were first in the senior division and we had a first and second. My kids were second in the junior division. And, uh, and so we were proud of them and that was a new body of water for us. Uh, we've been on it before, but it's been a while. And, uh, but it was kind of nice too, cause it was equal, uh, playing field because it was kind of new to all the the teams and because we don't fish it that much but uh dig it out on the river a little bit with the wife on the north fork of the shenandoah uh tom's brook section just uh canoeing and had a good time there had probably about 50 fish or so and some small mouth and bluegill and such so uh we got anna and then two day went on anna with the youth and then we go to smith mountain so um it is good good to get a little bit of variety and just try to figure them out, but you know, you have to kind of fish consistently to on on a body of water, I think, to really fit figure them out. But, but it's been good. You are just a fishing gypsy, sir. I can't wait to see you again. Uh, you get a good night's sleep there, and good luck tomorrow killing them. Yep. Tell, tell Ray to hold down the fort there. There you go, bro. <laughs> All right. Knock them out. See you guys. Good job. See you. Oh. All righty, everybody. I'm going to get that font. Perfect. All right, cool. So again, guys, uh, we're going to take one more phone call tonight because we don't want to be here all night. Again, the number is 667-307-8583. I know, uh, I think one or two of you called in. I by accidentally hit the drop call button for the whole column, and I apologize for that. Apparently, I'm getting better with this technology, too. So while we wait for some more calls to pour in here, um, Doc, you got about 98 swim baits out here. Yeah. And I feel ashamed if we don't uh, talk about this okay. at all. Okay. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, you know, I do fish hard plastics, but I love soft plastics. And basically this time of year, uh, uh, what I enjoy is, you know, the different, you know, the different, using the different size, uh, you know, baits. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I always liked, I always like to start out with the larger 
uh, swim baits, uh, Ray, you don't show them this. This here uh, is a true bass and uh, basically just a uh, Kevin Van Dam uh, strike king bass. I, that's, I like to start out with, uh, you know, a little larger swim baits uh, initially and, and then work my way down. Uh, I guess a lot of would depend on where I'm fishing too. Uh, but, uh, you know, I just, I just, uh, I just, you know, I think right now, I mean, it's, it's, uh, fish are feeding on the minnows. I mean, mm -hmm. they're just, you know, you, you just like they were talking about, were talking about earlier. I mean, they're just, they're everywhere. And I think that's, uh, that's, that's, that's what you do right now. You, you kind of match that hatch. And, uh, of course, you, you know, don't forget the crawdads. I think they mentioned that crawdads, big seven, yep. seven pound fish. They call them Susquehanna was full mm -hmm. of craw, crawfish. But, uh, I think right now, I mean, that's just, I just love fishing the, the swim baits, the, the small ones and the large ones. I, and, I absolutely love throwing swim baits. And what we're going to do is we're going to be talking about these baby ones here in a minute, but that mythical guy that I hung up on is now back on. So yeah, I apologize. Uh, 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 six, yeah, eight, just, six, you're on the, you're on the show. Yeah. I think right now, I mean, it's, it's, uh, fish are feeding on the minute. I was wondering with you all, what is your favorite color Cinco? Ooh, favorite color is Cinco. Uh, mine is probably going to be green pumpkin. Honestly, you can't go wrong with that color. Yeah. What do you, you Cinco? Yeah. Uh, I really don't. You don't don't this, yeah. Yeah. I don't know Jeff throws a lot of them. Uh, green, green pumpkin, purple flake. Purple flake. Oh, man. He's going in with that special color there, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I tell you one that that works well uh, that I like to throw uh, but the smaller Senko would be the uh, it's I guess you'd say green pumpkin with a sh chartreuse tip mm. uh, and it's, when the uh, fish are not biting uh, mm -hmm. nowhere else so that's good and also uh, there's going to be a um, uh, the Kenny G colors are going to be a good color coming out there uh, it's, we've got some purple and uh i'm anxious to try some of these new baits this next week but uh yeah i i think you know green pumpkins to me is probably the tr tried and true certain times i'll use watermelon red flake i like using watermelon red flake uh, a lot of times especially in spring uh but yeah that's uh that's kind of what i good color. typically throw yeah. you know uh stick to and the brown pumpkin seed pumpkin mm -hmm. seed's good and i'll use pumpkin seed with a chartreuse tip as well uh, that's a really know, good color too yeah don't don't be afraid to to dip them tips man mm -hmm. you know and if uh you know if you're a largemouth guy on these lakes don't be afraid to throw pink oh yeah just pink. solid oh, forgot it. Yeah. solid yeah. pink oh yeah yeah solid pink especially now boss thank you so much for calling in uh message me uh shoot me an email fishing at gmail.com uh instagram or facebook and i'll get you a little gift card uh, to be shopping here at jake's yeah, yeah, I heard y'all were just talking to Jaron. I'm actually his one of his kids in the junior division. Oh, great! I was one of the ones that got second. Oh, oh congratulations! Dude, awesome, man! Oh, man, well, give yourself a shout yeah. out. What's your first name or your alias? How about that? We'll use your tag name. Uh, Lucas Broy. Lucas, congrats! So, congratulations, what was what was Lucas. the key to your success? Uh, we found them on crankbaits, actually. Crankbaits, really? There you go. Yep. <laughs> what um? <laughs> Jeff's over here clapping under the table. He's over here clapping. <laughs> what um? W when it I'm came laughing, what Jenny just put. <laughs> when when it comes to your crankbaits and everything, did you guys try to make a long run or did you try to stay local to the boat ramp? Uh, we did. We went up for a little bit. We tried to stay close so we didn't waste all of our time if we didn't find the fish. That's a so big, we didn't try to make a long run. That's pretty smart, honestly, because that's the one thing I've seen with the James compared to like the Tidal Potomac is like the, the Tidal Potomac, in my opinion, uh, is you can just camp, honestly, and pick a bay, and you could probably camp there and have success. The James is about making long runs. If you're if you're out where they usually uh, launch the BFLs, that's a thirty minute run all the way to the Chick. 20 oh, like wow. it's a it's a it's a run to go all the way down there and it, it's weird because like half the people say like well you have to run to the chick and then there's other half that says like you really don't have to do that anymore hmm. and run all the way there to be successful and to win um and and, and boss i guess the, the last question i have for you uh before before we get out of here would be was there a point in in the day that you felt like something special was happening uh, when the tide stopped going out and was 
it at its lowest point is when we got the most bites and it was just still and when it started coming back up is it just cut off hmm. mm. and that's when you thought that you guys were going to catch them yeah we caught all of ours when between probably nine fifteen and mm-hmm. 10 o'clock <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Uh, something about that nine o'clock hour, man. There's, there's that nine o'clock hour, and there's that weird thing with the yeah. tides where, it, like, and that was the same thing with me on the Rappahannock. And then, and, and boss, before I go on a tie right here, I'm going to let you go here. But yeah, but dude, thank you so much. Congratulations. For calling Congratulations like, on yes. your finish. That's awesome. Good job. I need to get yeah. you and Jared and everyone in the studio for a conversation. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And the reason I was asking about the Cinco's is because me and my partner started our own little thing where we're making our custom Cinco's and trying to sell them. Oh, well, why don't you, you uh, why don't you promote that real quick then? Uh, it's fish finder baits. You can follow us on Instagram. It's fish underscore finder baits. There we go, guys. Fish underscore baits. Did I say that right? Okay, fish cool. finder. Fish finder underscore baits. Mm-hmm. And we'll get that out there for you. Dude, thank you Take so look, much. Then. And uh, go catch them tomorrow. Good job. Yeah, fish underscore. All right, oops, sorry about that. Um, because we got to, we're on a time. I want to make sure that we run on time. But boss, thank you so much. And then I'll put a link in the episode description to your baits as well here. Um, yeah, same thing with the Rappahannock River. I was fishing the Rappahannock River this past, the last regular season event for MVKBA, and I went through this stretch. I think I I launched at Hicks Landing, and I and I fished this uh outside ed outside uh, creek edge, and I went against the current all the way up. Didn't catch anything make a rotation to go back through there didn't catch anything third time through the rotation lights out wow just started catching Anytime. the same freaking stretch of wood though but it was because mm-hmm. the tide wasn't right for those stupid fish and mm-hmm. this is where i got in a fun conversation with some friends like that's what makes tidal harder tidal water the hardest in the world to practice for versus a, a small mouth river a lake or whatever because you could fish the right stretch but if it's the wrong time you won't catch anything right and you just need to have so much practice time on a tidal river you're not familiar with to mm-hmm. find the juice compared yep. to what a local has. It's such yep. a great advantage to have. Yep. Um, and then I did have one other thing, just to, to go in and hear what he was saying with the uh, the Cinco's. Uh, twist lock hooks. I started throwing these this year. If you're skipping a lot of docks or under a lot of uh, undercut banks, because I was doing this on the upper Potomac and the Shenandoah with, uh, with small swim baits, like oh, windless. Yeah. When it got really hot and shade, it was important because it doesn't bunch down on the hook. Like mm. I didn't realize how nice that is because I every time with a Senko and like a Kitek, it's so soft. Within three or four skips or a couple of fish, it will just keep coming down the hook. And I never found right. any way to do it. I really like with these screw locks, especially, dude, if you're listening, like with the Senkos, it just works for that very specific situation. You're not going to lose as many baits with it. All right. Um, I did want to finish up, though, uh, talking about those swim baits there. These yeah. things are cool looking. Yeah. Take a look at them. I mean, yeah. That's, like I said, these are true true bass. Uh, these are true bass. These are yeah. The thing about the action on these, they're very. It's a very subtle action. So as it starts getting cooler, uh, this becomes a. I think that really comes into play. I mean, it's just a. It's a. It's a more subtle. It's a more subtle wobble versus if you look at one of these that's got a thin tail or for a Kitek, you know, the Kitek with the thin tail, you're gonna have a lot more action. Uh, and this one here is the. Uh, uh, the, the shad, what was the, uh, ha, uh, not the Hasdong, but that's the uh, one we talked about. Uh, oh, Spark yeah, Shad. Spark Sorry, Shad, I, yeah. I even Sp- just had a yeah. there for a minute. Spark Shad. Uh, see how the tail's real thin? You're going to have a lot yeah. more action compared with the, the other ones, you know. Um, and that's important because you again uh i mean you could go down a whole rabbit hole with with yeah. swim baits but yeah one thing is if you take a swim bait guys um this is a super for my younger guys if you hold it up like this and it doesn't the tail doesn't sag very much it's going to have a tight action yep. if that tail drops all the way down so examples i keep talking about like um american trash fish by little creeper they're they're custom made soft baits but they're so soft that if you hold the head the whole body will bow down below it and with a bait like that in cold water and it doesn't take much for you to turn that handle for everything to move versus one of these baits that are harder it's gonna have a very tight action like a shad and believe it or not different times of year like they'll bite different ones based on all that action sleeper there don't forget 
I remember as a kid throwing this uh, in Fisherman. Al Linder would talk about this because we didn't have Kytex and right. things like that. And that's just that's, that tube. That's, that's just a sleeper. That's just an old, old uh, grub. Grub. Mm -hmm. grub. You know, never hear those used hardly anymore. Been a lot of fish caught on the old grub. Yes, it has. And then, mm. yeah, uh, and, and and of course, don't forget, don't forget my. <clears throat> I love that one. That's a great size fishing right now too. Oh, the scrounger head, dude. scrounger oh, my head. God. Oh my, that's that's the. I uh, love love fishing those things, man. We need to get Jenny to carry some of these heavier ones too. Mm -hmm. the heads. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. There you go, boss man. And we do have a couple of questions here. And then guys, yeah, if you want to get your questions in here, since this is not going to be a four hour show, I'm sorry. I know it's a Friday night. We got things to do. We got margaritas to drink. Uh, some people got to work in the morning and save lives. Let's go. Let's go back up here to uh, fishing. And I will not be able to try to spell that. Fr Fritzies? Fritzies. Fritzies. Yeah. Uh, you can't beat a depth buzz jet in the shallow water in the fall. I completely agree with that. Uh, let's see. Oh, the tag. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to tag my buddy. No problem there. Let's see. We got... We got Matt's uh, good deals. Uh, I fish the chick and the James a lot. I just had on uh, Chaz and his partner, uh, William, who just won the $10,000 tournament on the James River this past weekend. So that was a really good episode if you want to go talk about that. Uh, the James is a place I want to get a lot more familiar with. Uh, Scott uh, is on here. With the influx of the rain in the past week, where do the Potomac River rats like to go when it's flooded? Do you mean on the river or a different body of water? <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't fish it enough. To, Jeff, you probably uh, fish up there. Potomac. So this is what I would say to do. It depends on where the rain's coming from, in my opinion. And this is where I think if you don't, if you can't get out there a lot, Google Earth Pro is your friend. Looking at the water gauges is your friend because on bigger rivers like the Susky or the Upper Potomac, especially down below like the Monocacy, some sides of the river will be cleaner than others. It, it's really weird how that is. And I don't think you appreciate it if you're on the Shenandoah because the Shenandoah is so yes, narrow. Yeah. But you go to the Susky or that weird portion of the Potomac where it is really wide, it, the whole river doesn't act the same way going left to right. Um, and so the key is go check your water gauges out. And then so example is if there's a lot of rain dumping in from the Monocacy, going above the Monocacy will give you some clean water and maybe it's not as high level wise. Um, and then Chris Gorsuch talked about this as well. Uh, and this is just, again, from conversations that I've had, I'll let these guys talk to it more since they're more pros than I am. Yeah. Um, the water will always swell up above stream. And as it goes down, you can, so if it's on Saturday, it's really swollen up, up river. Well, by Friday that week, up river will probably start coming down again and you can fish that. So just keeping kind of an idea on a calendar of when things got flooded and stuff can help you out. Yeah, that's, well, it's just like right. right now, you you know, the, the South Fork is going, like we said, to about seven feet. Well, you look at the North Fork of the Shenandoah, and, and, you know, it's not really doing anything. And then once you get down where it flows into Harper's Ferry and get down around Brunswick, I mean, the water coming from the Shenandoah would be the Virginia side. Well, that's where the stain is going to be. Mm -hmm. And you'll have, you know, and then your Maryland side could be, clear mm -hmm. yeah so i know exactly what jeff is talking about you know so the, the south fork we're talking like let's just say riverton area um right now south fork's on the rise it's probably going straight up um the north fork it's not really doing much but it was in decent shape sunday um not much color but the point is if that south fork is really coming up six seven eight feet and you're putting in at riverton which is on the north fork so you have easy access to get the boat in the water. So you still have fishing down the North Fork. So when you get down to that seam line, where that muddy water meet, is meeting that clear, cleaner water, then don't be afraid to fish that seam right there, like mm -hmm. right where the main stream starts. Um, and that's that's a, a, a very good crankbait situation. Guys, I want to also say, like, thank you so much because we've had over like 130 people watching wow. in between YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Mm. Um, I, I really do love these call in shows. I know I didn't advertise this as much, it was really kind of relatively last minute for how I like to market things. We will be doing another one probably in a month uh, after Halloween. Once we have that next 
portion of the fall transition to be able to talk about it. Hopefully we have Gary Bear back in office if he's done gallivanting around the United States. We got two more questions and then we're going to uh, kind of end it here. Uh, Justin Sellers. Justin says, uh, where do you look at the water gauge levels? So it's uh, if you go on in and if you're still on air listening, it's USGS. Yeah, water, water real time water. Yeah, water. Right. yeah real so time it's, water. yeah, it's USGS real time water dot gov, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, yeah US water, water data. Yeah. USGS dot um, gov. And you can kind of key in which state you want, and then once you go to the state, um, you can you click on uh, it's the very top selection on the right. It's uh, basically gives you all the bodies of water in that state, and then you can go down, and it'll even show you the creeks, like say in Frederick County, like Hog Creek. Um, if you wanted to, you know, even check the small streams just to tell you how precise it gets. And then we got one more question here. We got Everett Garner again. Uh, where's y'all's favorite tidal water fishing spots? Um, I'll go first because I just came off of it. I think, uh, I think the top, oh, the Rappahannock is pretty cool. I really want to start fishing that place more because the top water fishing there is insane because the, the, the top Rappahannock doesn't get fished hardly at all compared to the James. And so the amount of people that said they caught them on a buzz bait and a frog all day was insane. Again. So that place there, I would also have to say uh, Potomac River, Aquia Creek, Pohick, Mattawoman, Belmont. I know I'm really just naming every damn bay, but like I've said on the show, like, literally every bay you could probably catch them in honestly and win uh, if i had to pick one i would say probably this is a big area but i'm gonna say belmont bay all the way into um uh is it aquaquan river i think it's aquaquan river all the way to woodbridge basically because what you can do there is you can fish from the dam of aquaquan reservoir all the way out to the bay and you can literally live in there, I think, year round. They winter there because there's, there's two major bridges. You can crappie fish there. They winter there. There's docks you can fish. You can go out into the flat of Belmont Bay. You could fish the grass. If you want to catch snakeheads, you go all the way to the back. It's like its own mini lake right in there. It, it, it's really cool. There's spatter dock all the way up through there. I actually came in second in Antietam Bassmaster event going all the way into the spatter dock fields and just flipping it because it was uh, like mid-April when they were actually bedding in the spatter dock and you're just flipping all day long. So that, that area right in there honestly has a little bit of everything and I think it's overlooked because there's no big tournament that goes in and out of there. What I mean by that is Matta Woman, they launch out of there. Aquia, they launch out of there. Lisa Vane, they launch. No one, generally speaking, launches out of Belmont. They'll drive to it. So there's a lot less commuter traffic, I think, but I, I could just be wrong with that. Uh, I don't know if you guys got anything to add for that or if that's a good way to kind of end it. Yeah, that's probably a good way to. Mm -hmm. Guys, I mean, I, again, I really appreciate you guys coming on tonight. Absolutely. Um, you know, Thank you. You got your camper, so I'm assuming I'm not going to see you again for a while. Well, You're probably going to be on the road. Well, I, I'm going to be on the road soon. It won't be long. I'll be ready to go. What's the clock say? How many more days and months? Uh, it's, it's still a long ways off, but it's over 100 <laughs> days. But I tell you, it's got a big, I got a big trip lined up at the end of that. I mean, it's mm -hmm. going to be about, about six weeks of fishing on the road. Dude, that's freaking awesome. You know. uh, again, guys, uh, really appreciate everyone for coming on the show. Like and subscribe to the channel. Go please check us out on Patreon. We have an October fishing tournament that I'm putting on. It's going to be with Tourney X. It's catchway release, a catch measure, sorry. Take a photo of it and on a board. You guys can win some money. Um, I'm doing it kind of weird for Halloween where the biggest bluegill wins 100 bucks, biggest rock bass wins 100 bucks. Just the goofy species because I know there are a lot of kids are there too. So go check that out on Patreon and we'll see you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.